Welcome to a special edition of Crawford County Outdoors. I'm Dwayne Kohler and we are talking horseback riding today. We are at the Four Seasons Equestrian Arts Center here in Westmead Township on Franklin Pike and we're going to talk all about horseback riding with some of the folks and some instructor and so I'm looking forward to that. So stick with us. Joining us now, Alexis Vanderhoof from Four, Four Seasons. Four Seasons. Four, Four Seasons. Seasons. Four Seasons Equestrian Arts Center. Well, thank you very much for the invitation to talk about yeah, horseback riding. Yeah, I'm so riding. glad that you're here. This this year with the crazy, all the coronavirus and everything, people are afraid to do all the regular stuff that they ever do before. And I'm, I'm like, well, our, our show is Crawford County Outdoors. Let's do outdoor stuff. You yeah. know? And what about horseback riding? Yeah, absolutely. So. We have tried to stay open for the most part and let everybody still come come out, ride, be with their horses, um, take lessons. You know, a lot of this stuff can be done really safely and from a distance. And there's nothing better than spending time with your horse when it's just you alone anyways. So it's it's been really nice that we've been able to continue operating all year round. And we've seen a huge increase in people really interested in lessons and just, like I said, being outdoors. and. So horseback riding, let's talk kind of broadly about the topic. Sure. So it's not only is it something that, that you're going to learn a lot of kind of rules and regs, that's not the right thing, but but, but you're going to learn a lot of Yeah, your foundations. There, and, yeah, it's a lot of details. Yep. But there's there's a fitness component to that. There's there's lots to it. So talk, talk about that yeah. you know, kind of in general. So we give lessons to everybody from all age ranges to all disciplines which is like english western you know a lot of different saddle type seats and uh what we do is we start usually with like grooming and we do tacking and we go through all of like that foundation work that they need for learning how to not only become like a good rider but a good horseman as well because that's really a big important part of it if you come to your lesson and you get on a horse that's already tacked up for you and you go ride and you get off and so you're missing kind of a lot yeah, of the basics so we do okay. everything from you know bringing them in to leading them to tacking them to brushing them to picking their feet then we get up we ride we learn our foundations and um it really just everything kind of builds on each other and it it's not only learning how to ride but it's just learning how to be a good horseman in general or a good horsewoman in general. So. so dealing with the horse, not not only do you have those kind of things you just talked about, but you got the horse's personality involved there too. So yeah, I, I want to talk maybe about different uh, different breeds of horses, which are going to be good for different kind of activities and so on. But but talk about that for a sec. How do you you know? You, so if you're riding your four wheeler or whatever, that's different than riding a horse, right? Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely. So we are very diverse here as far as horses goes. Actually, we don't have one type of breed that we ride here. Um, I would say like I personally ride quarter horses and we have a quarter horse breeding program, but our barn is open to all types of people and all types of horses and horse breeds. So in our lesson program today, we actually have a couple quarter horses. We have a gypsy vanner, two gypsy vanners actually. Yeah, um, describe that one for a second. I don't so know. that's a draft type. It's a small okay. draft type. They're okay. characterized by like black and white spots. They're a short, stocky draft type. They're very, they're characterized very, you you, you know when you see a Gypsy Vanner, well, I think we'll see one a little bit okay. later with uh, in the lesson program. But um, we have a, a Welsh Cobb in our lesson program and we have um, some Oldenburgs in our, so there's, there's like a really diverse um, I, I know whenever I, I enjoy going to the Crawford County Fair and you see the riding horses and you see the, the horses from the uh, from the harness races and all that kind of stuff. And then you see the draft horses. And so the, the kind of skinny racing type horses. Right. And then you see the draft horses and they're huge and they're big muscular or whatever. And you can ride those too. That's, yeah, a, that's a question. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we have a Percheron moving in here on oh, wow. Saturday. So it'll be 
our bigger type draft, but we have two gypsy banners, which are smaller type draft and okay. all the way down, all the way to a little tiny pony here. So there's all <laughs> sorts. <laughs> so now those big sturdy horses, um, now, this is just an observation. And I don't know if I'm right or wrong about this, but they seem to be like kind of calmer in nature they than are. some of the like racing horses and whatever. They yeah. seem to be very calm. They are. So we have almost all, we have one old, wonderful pony in our lesson program, but that's the only pony. We prefer our bigger, sturdier horses because sometimes they just have a calmer, more gentle personality. So you may come here and look at your lesson horse that you're about to ride and say, wow, that is a huge horse. I can't believe you're about to teach me on this huge horse. Where's the little pony? But you want the big horse, I assure you, because they, they are calm, they're sweet. They have really, really great personalities and uh, they're, they're really easy to learn on. So. I, I, we did a show, it's been probably four or five years ago now on logging, and they were bringing out the logs with horses and they had a little lift thing that would pull out the logs. Yeah. But those horses were like just huge, muscular, you know, mm -hmm. and they're dragging a 500 or 600 pound log, you know, it, it, just amazing. I mean, they are incredible. Like those horses are so smart. They're, they're the equivalent to like, um, you know, coon hounds and dogs that have, you know, their specific jobs and they're trained to these specific jobs. Those logging horses and even even these lesson horses are, um, you know, I do cutting. So, and so our cutting horses and our barrel racing horses, they're so smart. They, they learn their patterns, they learn their jobs and um, you really get that bond and you get that now, trust cut, with them. Cutting means quick turns and cows cows cutting cows oh, 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 yeah okay okay so okay but so so specifically now if, if I'm gonna pick a horse maybe that I want to have a horse for my house or for my how do you how do you what's how do you decide you know what's gonna be the best one for you so what we always say first is that you come and take a lesson okay. if you, before you go out and you say hey I, I want to buy a horse I'm I'm ready <laughs> we always say you come to uh, like a facility like ours and you take a lesson first and say do I really want to do this? Am I, am I good at this? Am I comfortable with this? Um, sometimes the idea of having a horse or like riding a horse and then actually going and doing it is a little bit different. So we always say, come on out, come pet some horses, come groom some horses, come take a ride. From there, we, we as like trainers and stable owners and people that have been in this industry for a really long time, can say to you, we think this would be a really good fit for you. We kind of evaluate you and see where you're at as far as, you know, riding level and even just horsemanship level. And then we say, hey, we think that this breed type would be really good for you. Or we say this um, discipline would be really good for you. Or you need a little bit more practice or you're doing great. Go, you know, let's look for a horse for you. So that's a lot of what we do here actually is um, fit people to horses and and suit them to what to what fits their needs. So let me ask you a totally different direction question here. Yeah. So so if I'm this tall or if I'm this tall, does it make any difference when I get started with this? You know, can I pick it up as an adult? Do I have to start as you know as a little kid and get, get going with get yeah going with right off the bat? No. So we have tons of different people that start of all ages and all experience levels. There's kids that have never ridden before that come after school and they're learning from the from the ground up. There's adults that have come and said, hey, I rode as a kid. I'd really like to get back into it. Um, and then there's adults that say, I'm retired or I, I'm looking for a new hobby and I really love horses. Can I learn this now? And all of it is yes. We, you can really learn and do anything at, at any time with these horses. So it, it, is there a, um, a particular fitness thing that I need to, to war be prepared for? Or right. Yeah, so, I mean, it is a physical sport. A okay. lot of people think that horseback riding isn't really a, a sport. You're but just it, sitting down going for a ride. Well, that's, you're really more, not. there's more to it than that, right? There yeah. really is. Okay. So, we, you don't have to be an athlete. You know, you don't have to be running okay. a 5K every day to be a rider. But it does take a lot of muscle strength. It takes a lot of balance, just natural physical balance. Um, and it takes a lot of mental ability too, you know, you get up on this horse and you say, okay, I'm on something that has a mind of its own and I am going to be in control and we're going to make this happen today, you know? So it's a, it's a lot of everything. You have to be physically ready to be up there and, and ride and do the job and you have to be mentally ready to say, 
you know, you're the boss too, so. So based on, if I'm a, I'm just starting out as a little kid, or, or if, if I'm an adult, maybe I did ride as a kid or whatever, come back, there, there's gonna be a different approach to the lessons at that, de depending on which, which part I, I'm at, right? Yeah, absolutely, they're very personalized. Okay. They're very custom. Okay. Um, and that's why we do all of this grooming and the tacking and we take you through and have them walk them around because you come for a first lesson and you don't know um, what you're in for and we don't know you either. So we, we take this whole time um, in that first lesson to really get to know how well you know horses, how willing you are to get to know them better. So if you're really hesitant and maybe a little nervous around them at first, by the end of the lesson we want to see that progression over an hour where you've been with this animal for a whole hour, how much more comfortable are you? And then we go from there. Um, we just really evaluate everybody and see where they're at and, and their willingness to go up and forwards. And that's how we customize our lessons. And like, they're all very, very personal. Kids, adults, we get to know each person. Um, we get to fit them to the horse that suits them best. It might take a couple tries. They may get on a lesson horse and say, I can't stand this thing. It's not listening. It's just not a good fit for me. And we change them and they are having a great time again. So it is, it, it takes a couple tries. It's not just a one size fits all lesson. It's a very uh, personalized. Let me, let me shift gears with you one more time here on, yeah. a, on a totally different subject. So the kind of equipment that I need to ride on the horse, there's uh, the Western saddle with a little knob that you can, you know, that you can hang on yeah. to or hang something. The oh no handle, yeah. Versus, versus <laughs> other kinds, you know, talk about that for a sec. What's, you know, uh, matching you up with that in addition to matching you up with the right kind of horse? Sure. So we always ask it first. We always say, hey, do you have a, an idea of where you want to go? Do you want to ride English? Do you want to ride Western? Do you like barrel racing? Do you like cows? Do you like jumping? You know, so that kind of gives us an idea of where we want to start and where we want to head in the future. Okay. Um, so we, we ask those questions, you know, because it's always up to the rider how fast and where they want to go with their riding experience. Do you like to trail ride? That's another one. Sometimes people just want to take a, a trail out back and that's fine too, you know, so um, and then from there, we have all different types of Western saddles, all different sizes, all different types and sizes of English saddles. Um, Rachel, our other instructor who can't be with us, can't be with us today, uh, she does driving as well. So there's even non-riding things that you can do here. You can drive, which is like the cart horses. Sure, sure. And there's even people that just are learning like halter and showmanship here, which is all on the ground, groundwork. So okay. um, we always just ask see where they want to be. Well, talk about the facility for a second. So now you have an indoor riding arena here. You have an outdoor uh, riding pen area. You've got places for if your horse does live here that it can be uh, out, out in, in pens and can kind of, I, I think horses are happy when they're outside just kind of yeah. in, in the, so Ab we'll talk about all that. Sure, you. absolutely. So um, we're kind of in the main hall right now. We call okay. this like our main hall, our main drag, you know, this is where I would say right now the majority of our boarded and our lesson and training and even my own personal horses live on this side over here. So these are all 12 by 12 stalls. Um, they're matted and they have sawdust and hay and they're all cushy and this is their home. You know, this is where they live here. And uh, so we have a wash bay so you can bathe your horses and spray their feet off or cold hose them after an exercise. We have our feed room here where we feed all tribute feeds and grains to all of our horses here. Um, we have an office facility for, we're very, like it's a very family friendly environment here. So there's kids that are always running around. We have an office with TV and it's got heat in it in the winter and restroom facilities. Um, and then we have our indoor arena, which is great for wintertime riding and uh, wintertime training. And it has barrels and poles and jumps and a cow track in it. It's got everything that you would want to really ride and, and learn over the winter time. And uh, then we do have an outdoor arena okay. that uh, is great for the summertime, but we wish we could use it all year. <laughs> Not in Northwest PA though. <laughs> and um, then we do have seven turnout paddocks right now. We just added a few more this year. Okay. So um, the turnout paddocks are, the horses are inside at night right now because the nights are cold. And then in the morning they get fed and they get hustled right outside and they spend most of their day out there hanging out in the sun and um, just being horses. And, and then they happy. come They're in again at night. With that sort of thing, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. 
It's okay. a really natural way of, of okay. life for them. You know, they come in, they're, they're nice and cushy and comfortable at night, and then they go out and they get to be a horse and run around with their friends in the day. <laughs> that's so, a no, paddock, that, that's a, like a pen. That's like a yeah. little, little pasture area specifically. Yes. Do you match them up with certain other horses that they, you know, get along with better? Or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, we do. Um, and it's funny, when a new horse comes in, we, again, you know, we're always assessing, we're always saying, hey, which paddock is this horse gonna fit the best in? Um, so we have a mare paddock, which is all all female horses, all mares. And like, female horses can sometimes have, you know, be a little grumpier and they'll pin their ears. So we have the whole mare paddock where they all just stand out there with their ears back at each other. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the gelding paddock, which is all, you know, males. And they are really relaxed and they hang out with each other. and. Um, so that, you know, there's a lot of different personalities. We have the thoroughbred in the Oldenburg pasture, which is, um, where April is in a, you know, you're where, where she's in with her big horses and, um, it's and all very individual. April's a former racehorse. April's so, a former racehorse. Has so she's an attitude. Has, high strung yes. and tall and long legs and. Um, she's in with another, a bunch of other tall, long-legged X race horses. <laughs> so they're, you know, they, they kind of want to be with their own okay. types of people, okay. um, their own types of horses. Well, I, I'm excited to go have you show us around here. Show yeah, awesome. I can't wait. On. Very good. Joining us now, Wendy Gaden. So, Wendy, uh, you give people lessons here at the Four Seasons. Yep, talk I do. About, talk about that, and, and you know, kind of like give us a big picture. Well, when I started out, I was little when I started riding, and I did 4-H here. And as everybody knows, I moved away and came back from South Dakota, and I ended up here at Four Seasons. It's a really nice place to be. Um, the people are genuine. They're nice. The horses are great. Um, Doing the lessons here is great because it gives people an opportunity to learn about the horses, not just how to ride them, but how to care for them, to brush them, groom them, saddle, bridle, you know, all the different aspects of the horse. You know, you learn how to pick their feet. You get to see shoes or farriers work here. You know, the, there's days the vet comes, people get to see the vet work here. I mean, it's just something the whole family can enjoy and it's something that if anybody wants to learn about, they can always come out here and learn. Everybody's usually here. I mean, there's usually people here. They're all always willing to help and, you know, try to teach people about things here. So over your shoulder, we got a couple of different breeds of horses here. Talk about that for a sec, if you would. Well, out in this pasture here, that mare walking right there, the dark mare with the green halter on, she's a Morgan. And then the big mare that just walked in front of her, that's a quarter horse. Um, there's a big diversity here. There's thoroughbreds, there's Odenbergs, there's dressage horses, jumping horses, barrel horses, western horses, cutting horses. There's pretty much every aspect of the horse world that you want to to be able to ride. Is there kind of a way to match up, um, you know, the, what's going to be best for me and what's going to be best horse breed to kind of match with me? Do you have a... Um, there is. If you have an idea of what you want to do or how you want to ride, um, yeah, there is, like quarter horses are pretty much all around. You can usually find a quarter horse for anybody. But if you want something specialized like the Odenbergs, the big horses, those are your jumping horses, dressage horses, you know, your thoroughbreds. They're a little bit, you know, they're out there. They, they're the English horses. And then the quarter horses are more your Western horses. You know, but you can always find something for everybody. Whether you want a horse that's kind of, you know, jiggy and hyper you know you can find a you can find a horse like that you want something laid back that just walks around you can find something like that too there's something for everybody so if you're starting out with somebody with a lesson do you have to get a sense of what the person where they are and then where the horse is and how the two how the two kind of match yeah, up and you really do have to match them up if you got somebody that really doesn't know anything you know about the horses and you got to teach them sure you'll you'll find a horse that matches what that person knows or you know, what, what the mentality is for what they do know and what they don't know. But yeah, if you know how to ride, then we have horses that are advanced a little bit more for somebody who knows more about riding than, you know, what the normal person just coming off the 
out of the city would know, you know. But it's a nice place just to learn to, just to learn what to do, if so, nothing else. So I have a wacky question for you here. So <laughs> South Dakota, Crawford County, compare and contrast. Uh, um, things, <laughs> things are, there are probably some things that are sort of similar. One, you know, we're not a big city, you know, kind of mm -mm. a spot. But there's some things that are probably pretty different too. Yeah, um, South Dakota, where I lived, it was the north eastern corner and it's flat there's no trees there is trees but very few um, out there the disciplines for riding out there it, you have ranch horses they work cattle that's what they do all day i mean you work ranches or the big feedlots so your horses are out there they're working horses um, barrel racing is another big thing out there mm. um, that is that is really it's really huge basically so there's a lot of people that have barrel horses that raise barrel horses and then there's a lot of ranches out there that raise your big quarter horses that that's what they do work on the ranch um, there is a little bit of diversity out there for western pleasure and english but very little compared to here like here it is english pleasure western pleasure and barrels but not like it is out there it's there's a lot of different different disciplines I, I was in South Dakota one time, and we went to see uh, um, the monuments and all that kind of stuff, and it was a beautiful. But but like you just said, it it um, there's lots of hills, but there's no where we were there. But there was no um, like kind of four seasons worth of you know. I mean, Trees. we have four very distinct seasons here. Oh you yeah. Know? And right now it's beautiful with all the leaves, you know, coloring, and they're going to be falling down soon and all that kind of stuff. But it was very, very different out there. It is. Seeing, seeing antelopes running around all over the place and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Out west, um, out across the state, out west, where the Black Hills are, there's elk and antelopes and everything. They're out there in the Badlands. And they have trees, but it's more conifers, you know, it's more your, your pine trees. And the trees that you do see around where I lived at, they're, they're, they're around a house for a windbreak. That's what they are <laughs> because it's all plains. So, you know, there's, there's a, a lot of horses out there and there's a lot of different disciplines out there too. So well, it's let me just ask you, way different. Let me ask you one more point here. So if you're gonna make an argument for why horseback riding is a good thing to do, you know, make, make the argument for that. What, what, how, how would I, how would I have, have that debate if I, if I am I gonna go ride a motorcycle? Am I gonna ride a horse? Am I gonna, oh, you know? there, No, there's nothing, no comparison to a motorcycle <laughs> and a horse. Now, come on. <laughs> no, I, the horses, um, I've ridden both, motorcycle and horses. I would prefer the horse because I like to, be able to just take it easy and slow and just go out and see this you know it's it's you're in the outdoors it's you just walk around you just look it's mother nature it's all there it's just laid back and slow and that's that that was my take from riding the motorcycle in the black hills to this i would have rather been on a horse because then i could have like <laughs> gone through the woods and the trails and i could have went through and, and seen the deer back in the woods you know i don't have to just see them out in the roads or in the fields i could actually go back through and look and and you know just sit there in the woods and just listen it's so nice well i like to, i like to hear that because we're talking <laughs> crawford county outdoors and you're you're giving a good a good pitch for the outdoors it is so. it's i love it it's just i like the outside and i love to trail ride so it's it's just really a nice nice thing to do well thank you very much for being with us today well you're welcome okay we'll just do some simple walk trot change directions and just regular leads and everything today go ahead and cross over to b Make him walk at the barrel. Good, he's listening to you. Now go ahead, you can canter. Pull him down, make him stop. You make him back up. Go ahead, steady, give and take, give and take. There you go. Okay, when you walk him up again, make him pick that canter back up and make a full circle. Make him continue on with it. Oh, 
Oh, he's got the wrong lead. Pull him down. There you go. Okay, make him stop here at the barrel. You can go ahead, walk around the barrel and switch directions. Did it make him trot? And then up the center and around the barrel. Then you can just bring him down back on the rail. Go ahead and make him canter at the gate. There you go. Okay, no, pull him down, pull him down. Just make him stop. He'd be a little bad today, isn't he? Blue, can you back up? Can we back today? No, keep making him, make him go. Make him give to what you want him to do. There you go. Nice. Good. Well, thanks, Wendy, and thanks, Alexis, for having us here at the Four Seasons Equestrian Arts Center today. Okay, stay tuned. Chef Lisa will be up next with, some another, with another great recipe. And joining us now, Chef Lisa, Lisa Beck. So what are you working on now? Well, I have a new recipe. As I always say, you're going to love it. French. And I always do, by you the way. You do, yes. you do. And I love the recipes that your wife sends my way, so there's never a complaint when it comes to recipes around here. French onion chicken meatballs. Wow. Now, wow. as I've stated to you before, you can do this with ground pheasant. You could do this with ground chicken, which we're using today, or even ground turkey. So um, any of those white meats would do. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Uh, but today we're using chicken. So we'll get started. There's a couple steps that we have to do, uh, but this is, this is a, I always say, a family fave. <laughs> As always, we have lots of favorites around here. So we'll get started. So you're gonna start with about a pound and a quarter of whatever ground white meat you wanna use. So we're gonna put that right in there. And then we're gonna add to it one egg, and you ooh, are- Oh, oh, my specialty. He is so good at this. I was so impressed the last what time. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah, we never could figure that out. I don't know, but you can know how to crack them really well. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So we have one large egg in there, and we're going to add to it about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and about a half a teaspoon of pepper. So we're going to put that there. This is about a half a cup of panko breadcrumbs. Okay. okay. And this is where we get messy. Yeah. This is a teaspoon each of garlic powder and onion powder. Garlic powder and onion powder. Let's try it. Mix those in there. Fresh, a little more than a tablespoon because I love fresh parsley, but <laughs> a tablespoon of fresh parsley right out of my garden, which is still growing, by the way, Yay. even though it's gotten cold outside. So now That's the garden that we worked on a couple that's years right. back, right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. And then a half a cup of fresh grated Parmesan cheese. Fresh grated Parmesan cheese. These are okay. really good. 
Okay, so I wash my hands. Time to get messy. Let me wash my hands okay. while you're doing. Go ahead. And I'm gonna mix this up because we're gonna need to make some meatballs here in a minute, Dwayne. So I'm gonna need your your skills there. And you know, you don't ever want to over mix meatballs because they get kind of dense. Oh, sure. And one trick, and we didn't do it today, is you can mix all those separate ingredients together first and then mix them with your meatball, your, the meat. Um, that's a, just a suggestion, you know, some people do that. We didn't do it today, but you can. You take all those other separate ingredients and mix them first, but you don't want to over mix them. So I have a lined uh, baking sheet with parchment paper. And when I make meatballs, sometimes I use like a cookie scoop and then they're all uniform, but it doesn't matter. Sure. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make... We're going for the, like the golf ball size? Um, maybe a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller um, than golf ball. I, I was going to say probably about an inch to an inch and a half. And they do, these get sticky. I mean, chicken, when you work with chicken, sometimes it does. Um, and if you have a problem with that, I just tell people to spray your hands with a little cooking spray. Um, and that, that will help, but I don't think we'll have a problem. Am I making it too small? Uh, maybe a little, a little bit, bigger. just a little bit okay. bigger. And these are, these are super flavorful. Of course, they're made with chicken, so um, it's not a red meat, so they're a little healthier. Okay. But what, what's really cool about this recipe is they're going to end up, we're going to bake these in the oven. We set the oven to 400. We're going to bake these in the oven for about 20, 18 to 22 minutes. And then while they're they're baking, we're gonna make a sauce, which is like a French onion soup. Ooh. Yeah, we're gonna caramelize some onions and that's a favorite of mine. Yeah, it is been. it is mine as well. Actually, we all another family fave. Yeah. <laughs> we love that here. So you're doing a great job, Dwayne. Meatballs. Yeah. We've made a lot of different styles of meatballs. Oh. The bacon, the bacon bourbon ones. Those I, I still, I'm still getting positive comments about that yeah, one. So wow. those, those I, think, are, I think at Deer Camp, that's going to join in this year. One that you take. Take yeah. that for a special treat there for I everybody. would if you can. I hope we have room. We might have to squeeze a few of these together. Well, they're not like cookies. They're not going to get a little. Not going to expand. No, no. There's... No flour and uh, okay. any leavening no, in this, so. No yeast or. Yeah, no, no uh, baking soda, baking, baking, baking powder. powder. Yeah. We have our cast iron skillet too. We're gonna use that to make our sauce and caramelize our onions while these are in the oven. Anyway, almost there, our oven is preheated oh, and ready. Like the oven's ready. We're timing this one really well. So it's okay to squeeze a few in? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Do what we have to do. You can even, they even say, you know, when you're making these, you can even fluff it with a fork at the end. Oh. The meat, after, almost like what you would do for rice. Oh, yeah. And it keeps them from being too dense. We did a good job there. Let me wash up. Yes, we did there. That looks great. So we're going to put those in the oven that was preheated at 400 for about 18 to 22 minutes. And then we're going to get started on our caramelizing the onions. pan on. It feels pretty it feels warm. feels pretty warm. Let's make sure it's, we have it all the way to high. We do. So what we're going to put in there next is some butter and we're going to drizzle just a little bit of olive oil. You can okay. use any kind of oil. Um, I'm just going to use a just a little bit of olive oil and three tablespoons of butter. And then we're going to get those onions going. So this is about two medium. Me those around. Sure, I'm yeah. There. Grab that left-handed spoon. Okay. We have about two medium sliced onions. I'm going to see if I can convert this left-handed spoon into what your right-handed oh, spoon. Oh, I bet you can, Dwayne. 
so we're going to sweat those. So really it's giving them about three to five minutes um, in the oil. When they start, you're going to want them to start to shrink a little bit, uh, start to become translucent, and then we'll start doing some other um, things to them. Get ourselves organized here. Is melting. Yeah. There's some sizzle in that pan. We like to hear that. That's always a good thing. Yep. Whoops, I think one got knocked, away from you. Knocked one out, didn't I? Yep. Wait, we'll throw it back. Five second roll, right? Yeah. I was trying to think other. I guess you could do this with beef or venison. Um, the original recipe was made for a white meat, but I suppose that you could use whatever you want. Um, we, we cook, we did this the first time with chicken and it was really good. So, um, that's what I recommend, but really. Now, typically at the store, you don't, it's, you don't routinely see ground chicken, do you? You do, do you? you do. Okay. Now, more often than they, you used to, you can find, a, uh, it's right next to, you know, they always have the turkey, then the chicken. And they're usually side by side. You can find the ground turkey next to the ground chicken. And um, We more, always grab the ground turkey in the freezer section. So right. Maybe, maybe I just don't, I never look. Never the, looked over there. Okay. But yeah, you can find it um, in the meat section. But you're right, they do have it in the freezer section as well. So, So those are cooking up. You can smell them. They're strong. Yep. Little sizzle there. Yep. So we're going to give them another, oh, about two minutes or so. And then we're going to add some sugar. So I have two tea, uh, tablespoons of sugar. So it's going to add some sweetness to them. And then this is a key ingredient. And I, I found it to be interesting when I first found this recipe. But I it, it turns out that it really does enhance the flavor. This is about... a teaspoon of Italian dry Italian seasoning oh, so it adds okay. that little bit of a kick to it like a little uh, not a spice but you know that Italian taste yeah, sure. so it has all those flavors in there we'll give it another minute then we're gonna add that in there then we're just gonna let them cook down um, and then they need to cook probably almost as long as the meatballs and then we'll get ourselves ready for the sauce because, uh-oh, we have another okay, one, another one to get away. That, we'll let that one go. That one's going to stay there. We'll let that one go. <laughs> but what we'll do is we'll let them cook down so that they're caramelized. And we'll pull over the other ingredients that we're going to use and talk about the ones that we're going to use for the sauce. Okay. And then what happens is once we put it all together, we pull those meatballs out, we put them in there, and we change that oven to broil because we have a cast iron skillet here. Nice. So we can put it underneath and melt the mozzarella cheese that's going to go on the top. This is sounding awesome. Oh. I'm glad it sounds awesome. I wish they could smell <laughs> it. It tastes awesome. Wait till we get to the end. So Okay, so I'm going to add the sugar. Actually, there's a little left in there. And we're going to add the Italian seasonings. You want to get those get mixed blended. up? Okay. Yeah. They're cooking. I'm going to slide down the rest of these ingredients. They look good. You can see that they're sweating. You know, oh, that's right. they um, the the liquids coming out of them. They're translucent. Starting to be translucent. They're going to um, start to get softer, and then they'll be caramelized probably within the next 10 minutes or so. So they're going to be there for a little while, absorbing the flavors that we just added to them. Awesome. And then when they're about ready, we're going to add uh, about two tablespoons of Worcestershire. Okay. And it kind of deglazes the pan, so we're going to want to keep mixing it. And we're going to add about a teaspoon of salt to that. So those two combination, and we'll have you keep mixing it nonstop. And then I'm going to add some garlic. Oh. So I have two uh, garlic cloves that I minced. So we're going to add the garlic to it. Then once those are cooked for about a minute, we're going to sprinkle a little bit of flour in there. Okay, okay. so it's going to thicken it okay. up. And we'll just have you keep mixing, keep mixing. And I will then slowly add about, it calls for about a cup and a half. I have a more like almost two cups, like 
a cup and three fourths of chicken uh, or not chicken I'm sorry beef stock oh, sure okay and of course at that point I'm looking at my time here our meatballs will be done so we can put them in there and then cover them with about a cup mm. and a half two cups of really good mozzarella cheese stick that under the broiler and hey. And it's taste time. Oh, everything sounds wonderful. Which is, of course, our favorite time of all. Always my favorite time. I don't know why it is. I don't hmm. know either. I could probably figure it out. Uh, anybody who walked down those steps here, I think they could figure it out. Those look really good. Not yet caramelized, but they're definitely getting there. And they smell good, too. I mean, you can oh, smell yeah. that. It smells wonderful. Neat optional version on different version for um, your onion soup you know add some meat to it healthy meat um, you got your protein you got your egg your, well obviously more protein a uh, good way to make a nice little meal now you could serve this over mashed potatoes or rice you can eat it by itself you know with vegetable roasted vegetables on the side um, that's what we did when we had this dinner um, Really, you can make it your own. Okay, so what we're going to do is they're starting to look really good. So we're going to add uh, the Worcestershire sauce and the salt. And just keep stirring. And just keep stirring. Smell that. Mm, wow. Yeah. Another little great scent. Yeah, I know. This is a really interesting combination with the Italian seasoning, the Worcestershire sauce. Um, you know, we end up with the really good mozzarella cheese, um, the, the chicken meatballs that have, you know, the spices that we put in them, the fresh parsley. This is, this, it's a good one. I'm going to add the garlic. So here's another, we're going to add another, we need smell vision I'm going to add another yeah. scent. Getting that garlic smell now. Yeah. That'll keep the vampires away. <laughs> That's right, and seeing that, you know, it's this time of year, we yeah. want to keep the yeah. vampires away. That's definitely an important thing. Really cooking down nice. And make sure that the garlic is cooked well, and then we'll add the flour. And that you will, for sure, I'm going to turn it down just a tiny bit because um, we don't want it to burn when the flour's in there. It's going to make like a roux, so it's going to start okay. getting thicker, and then we'll slowly start adding the, the beef uh, stock. So, Oh, I can really smell the garlic now. Mm, it's wonderful. Yeah. I, love, I love garlic. Me too. We'll add the vampires now. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ooh, we're going to add this. About two tablespoons of flour. And let that incorporate, then we'll serve beef stock. Definitely instantly thickening. Up. Yeah. You can see why you need to keep stirring during this. Yeah, you do. You definitely, definitely have to keep, keep stirring. stirring. I'm actually going to start just a little bit there. Because they, you really should do it slowly. Incorporate that beef stock in slowly. Whoops. Get a little mess there. Oh, wow, does that smell awesome? Yeah. Yeah. It smells like French onion soup. Mm. It really does. Let's see what we're doing on time. We got great time. The meatballs will be done just in time. Notice we're letting it thicken up before yeah. I put more in there. Yep, you can see that it's really working. Mm -hmm. more. Nice thing about the cast iron, it stays nice and hot. And kind of like hot all the way around, even where it's not right. totally like right touching on right. the burner, the whole thing stays hot. I use that almost every night. I love my That's cast great. iron skillet. It, it's just. I'd like to start things on the stove and finish them in the oven, and I think that's why. It's a classic. Yeah, it is a classic. 
as long as you take care of them. Never leave a drop of water on those. Oh, really? Oh, they rust. It'll yes. Make a rust oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I always season mine. Um, I don't use soap on it. I just clean it really well. And then I rub a little bit of um, Crisco on it, just a tiny okay. bit, and just keep it, you know, seasoned a little. And um, put it away that way, and I never have a problem. But if you don't do that, and you just if you use soap and water, or you don't season it, or you put it away with a little bit of uh, moisture on it, there'll be rust spots. And I mean, you it's, you can easily take them off, but I don't like to do that. So I want to take it out and use it. It's looking good. Put the rest of this in there. Let it thicken up. I'll do a little cleaning, house cleaning. Some of this. Get ready to take that the meatballs out here in a couple minutes. That, that almost even looks like French. It does onion look soup. like French onion soup. You know, I've never made my own French onion soup, but I would assume it's similar to what we just did, mm. because it does look and it does taste like it. So um, I think we probably came pretty close to how they do it. I don't know. I'll have to research that. Actually, I think I did make French onion soup many, many years, maybe about 25 years ago, and it didn't turn out, and I know I didn't do this. So. <laughs> I thought I made French onion soup, but that wasn't the case. And we'll even let them sit in there for a minute before we stick them in, because we'll want to make sure the broiler's good and hot. There we go. you were mentioning about the tiredness factor with hunting. It's like the first day, it's all exciting. It's a, you don't sort of notice it, but then the second day when you go, you're still tired from the first day, and that's the one where you... Yes, And then yeah. on the third day, and then after that, then you're good. Then yeah. You're good. So yeah. I stir them. You, get, you have to get over that hump. You, yeah. Stir them up or no? Yeah, you can. Yeah, get the sauce on them. Yeah, you got to get over that hurdle. Yep. Timer's going to go off. I better up to the. I'm going to up it to broil, and turn off my timer. So the broiler's getting started. Actually, turn yeah, that off. Doesn't that look nice? Oh, just amazing. This out of the way, and then we'll put the cheese on it. Okay, time for cheese. Really good, melty, and we don't have to stir anymore, Dwayne. No more stirring. Okay, my arm gets a break. Yep, that's, that's right. Okay. Look at that. Wow. Now we're gonna put her under the broiler. Use your mitts because that's hot, right? About one to two minutes under there. Wonderful. And I can even pick up the onion that I dropped. You could do that. A little housekeeping go. there. I could wipe up this little bit of mess I made. Don't touch that. It's very hot. Very hot. So the name of our show, Crawford County Outdoors. Yes. We've got to get outdoor stuff going this time of, with this crisis that's going on. So people getting outside, I think is a wonderful thing mm -hmm. getting doing things. And thank you to our folks for the horseback riding that we that we had uh, um, for, our, for our topic today. Um, but you gotta have indoor stuff too. You gotta eat, right? You gotta eat, you gotta eat. You gotta so eat. You gotta thank you for bringing all these great things together. This, sure. is, this is tremendous. Sure, this is, this is a fun, delicious recipe. Oh, there's my timer. Fun and delicious. Yep. So it's just got a little bit longer under that broiler, and then we will be able to taste test. Wow. Yes. Yes. Look at that. That is wow. smoking hot. Wow. And delicious. Let's see. I'm 
bring any large spoons with me down here. Our favorite time. Mm. Without question. Yep. Now, I always say this, be careful, it's very hot. <laughs> it really is. I mean, you almost want to let it sit there for a second. Woo, lots of melty cheese on that. It's something else is good thing with the little stringiness there. That's right. Yeah, that's super hot. I'll get the fork and you can cut it. Look at that. Look at all that melty cheese. Oh my. That's good stuff. There you go, Dwayne. Mm, thank you. You want to cut it because as everybody can see, it's smoking. Don't burn yourself. It's got cheese everywhere. Why is it when the food gets finished, Lulu comes running in? She, she knows. Does she, can she tell? She can okay. tell. Hi, Lulu. Hi, Hi. Lou. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Lisa, that is amazing. Isn't that good? Mmm. I told you, it's a keeper. Wow. I like the chicken with it. I think, I think this was designed for chicken. But again, I think you could use anything. But. Mmm. So the official title, Ground Chicken French Onion Meatballs? Sure. Okay. Yeah. You could even make up a new title? Yeah, it could be French Onion Chicken Meatballs. It could be French Onion Pheasant Meatballs. <laughs> French Onion Turkey Meatballs. You pick what you want to use and you can make the name. Well, let me say thanks to the folks at the Four Seasons Equestrian Arts Center for the show today. Thank you, Lisa, for this You're wonderful welcome. recipe. Thank you to the folks at home for joining us on Crawford County Outdoors. And we'll talk to you next time.